Hi again everyone, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is The Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Peggy. And this is another audio file from Peggy. Hi Ollie, this story comes with PayPal donation. I mentioned in the story that I always thought I was homely. So I'm including a couple of old pics of myself. If you want or know how to make them into an icon for my story, you have my permission and approval. If not, that's cool too. Whatever is best for you. Um, correction. I said Facebook when talking about a video a classmate wanted me to write the music for. I meant to say YouTube. Thanks for everything. Peggy. <clears throat> so let's get right to Peggy's audio. Hi, Ollie, it's Peggy. Um, you did a video for me very recently called The Narc Wants You to Know. And it was an old voicemail of my mother's where she had contacted Mike's family to basically try to exert control over me, it uh, seems like. But these are this is another old voicemail. It's from 2014, so I call them from the vault. And I hope nobody minds that these are old because I think they're still relevant and hopefully somebody can get something from them. Um, but I question why I'm still bothered by these. You're right, the longer I'm no more um, no contact, the more memories surface. And these are starting to come from my teen years. So that's like almost 50 years or 45 years ago. And I don't need this right now. Um, I'm having a hard time with Mike's death. This is the second year and I'm being treated for a major depressive disorder and anxiety disorder along with CPTSD and then hospice said I had more PTSD from Mike's death. So, and this started back in the late summer, so I've had a rough time for months. I am back in therapy with that therapist I really liked. She retired from a company or a group, but then she started her own private practice part-time and she only charges whatever your copay is on insurance, so she's affordable for me and that's that's wonderful. But, you know, this voicemail triggered feelings for my teen years. And some of this stuff I just soon not remember, and I especially don't want to feel it again. Uh, contact is so low it may as well be no contact. I call her maybe every two or three months, and I'll never interact with my brother again. And that's, that's been the case for years. If he calls, I won't answer. I'll send you his voicemail, and we can make fun of it because... That seems to be my only relief, is to laugh at some of this. Um, I saw a meme that said, uh, that which does not kill us leaves us with a dark sense of humor and an unhealthy set of coping emotions or mechanisms. And that's true, for me anyway. I mean, I've got really dark humor, and some of the things I say sometimes will even shock people. But I don't think Wes will bother with me. He ignores me. Well, at the time of this voicemail, he was spying on me and reporting to our mother so she could get on the phone and jump all over me for whatever. So, you know, let me start the audio. Um, like I said, it's not very long, and I'm going to interrupt it to explain things or make clear what she said. October 8, 2014. Well, I love how the out of breath, I can't talk. Like these type of calls are, Virginia was famous for making, I'm an old woman and I'm going to die. And Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Nothing but guilt trips. Nothing but guilt. Okay. Um, I didn't think you'd answer, and that's a shame. You forget how old I am, so there's the old card. And this, you, you forget how much care and expense it takes for me. She still hung up on money and her will and the fact that my brother maneuvered her, which with her complete compliance, into cutting me and my sister out of her will, and he gets everything. So that's the short version, and that's really all that's needed. But uh, this video or this audio was just two years into Mike's diagnosis. I didn't need this shit right then. 
you know, she kept leaving messages like this, and the more she pushed at me to call her back, the easier it was to push back and simply stay no contact. And you're right, she went into a spiral. She tried every fucking narcissistic trick in the book. Guilt, shame, anger. I mean, it ran the gamut. And her biggest weapon against me was always shame. I lived in fear. Shame was a weapon. Uh, I was easily embarrassed. Um, she'd just tell me I was too sensitive and I needed to toughen up. But with her beginning dementia, she's very nice to me now. Um, she even told me she loved me, although I don't really believe it. She's lonely. She thanks me for calling, and uh, I think he's controlling everything, even the temperature of the house, because she told me how cold it was. But, you know, if, if I call up there, or should call, and he answers, I'm going to hang up. And I know they have caller ID, and I don't care that he knows it's me. He already has said I'm crazy. I don't even know why you're bothering up there. She's cut you out. She's abused you. You have audio recordings of the proof of her abuse, and yet... You'll still call up there for any good reason? She said she loved it. So it takes her to be demented. It takes the narcissist to be demented before they'll be nice to you. You think about that. You think about that before you might feel any guilt or she's dying. Well, why did it take you to be physically out of your mind? with actual physical dementia for you to be nice to me. That's what it takes. That's what it takes for the narcissist to be nice to you. For them to be mentally ill, for real mental illness on the narcissist, is them being nice. How fucking crazy is that? That when they get an actual mental illness. They're actually more like the people you actually wanted them to be their whole life. Chew on that. So what difference does it make, what I do now? But, you know, there were no positive emotions allowed at home when I was a kid, only negative. And Mike used to comment how I had no expression on my face. I learned to do that deliberately. I learned as a young child, it, you know, if I had expression, she would poke and prod and question me until I would give in and tell her what she wanted to know. And she was like one of those damn alien things that bores into the brain and you can't get it out. So, you know, as far as narcissism and my relationship with her, the, the few friends I've confided in don't truly understand it. And they keep saying, you know, why do you keep thinking about that? Put it out of your mind. Throw the tape away and be done with them all. And yeah, that's right. Cutting the do not throw the tape away. You need the tape as a reminder. You need the tape as a learning exercise. Without the tape, we wouldn't be here right now. Without the tape, okay, you wouldn't have re you wouldn't have you wouldn't have had this to for me to point out to you that your mother is only nice to you when she has dementia, when she's not in her right mind. It takes your mother to be mentally ill to be nice to you. Why are you still calling up there? Mount is great advice, but what do I do with the rest of it? It wouldn't matter now if I burned this tape and danced around the flames. The words that were meant to hurt me are seared into my brain anyway. And that's something I don't seem to be able to control. So let me go on with her message here. You are going to uh, write a book, you said, with a book on everybody in your news. The book will be full if you write it on yourself. So she's already trying to, you're going to write a book? See, that's her fear. That's her fear kicking in. Don't write a book, nobody will believe it. That's all fear-based. I mean, this is just proof my brother was spying on me. You know, you say you're gonna write a book about the dirt on everybody you know. Well, the book will be full if you write it about yourself. And that even gives me the creeps that I can sound like her. But it was a fucking joke. I was joking with somebody on their Facebook page in 2013 or 14. 
doesn't matter if it's a Jew. You took it as a joke. She didn't. Because obviously she has something to worry about if she's going to come and gaslight you to scare you away from the idea of it. No? And I said I would like to write a book and call it Family Dirt. And I was thinking about funny stuff, like, you know, for the kids to, to have. It just not a book, uh, a journal type thing on my computer that they would find after I'm gone about my grandfather. You know, supposed to be holding the letter for somebody on the church roof, and he wandered off talking, and they're sitting up there, you know, nobody holding the letter. And, you know, there was nothing risque I was going to tell or anything bad. But, you know, uh, write it about yourself. It'll be full. What the fuck? I mean, everything coming out of her mouth is intended to hurt. So it is. It's more intended to gaslight, not hurt. Yeah, it hurt you, but it was intended to keep you from doing it. Okay? Yeah, it hurts. That's the surface. But what's her intent behind it? Her intent behind it was to keep you from doing it. Why did she want to keep you from doing it? To, expo to keep you from exposing her and her minions of their bullshit. <clears throat> Remember, it took her to be out of her mind with a mental illness before she was ever nice to you. It's kind of unthinkable to me that this old bitch could leave a message like that to me knowing that I was had the knowledge that I was going to be a widow at any time. So fuck she didn't care about you being a widow, Peggy. That wasn't her intent. Her intent wasn't necessarily to hurt you. It was to silence you. Her. But I'm not an author. I'm musical. I play piano, guitar, out of harp, some harmonica. And, you know, I'm an amateur singer-songwriter who never went anywhere with it because I was too afraid to. And, um... You know, I couldn't go to any place strange, so that pretty much let out performing anywhere. And I think she was glad because it kept me at home under her control. And no matter how much people told me I was good, I couldn't do it. And I do it some now, and some of my songs are on my Facebook page, and I listen to some and think, boy, I need to take that off. You know, that one's not good or, or whatever. But most of them are not really all that bad. So I, th I think Wes was uh, jealous that I could play by ear. I mean, he's more, he's highly trained. He's more proficient at his instrument. He likes uh, woodwinds and brass. I'm not proficient. And somebody outside has a boom box going in their car, so I'm sorry about that. I know this recorder is so good it's picking them up. Um, but anyway, here's the next message. I think you go out and you have a good time, and that's fine. But don't come to me telling me oh, that your back is in bad shape. Okay. This was about the class reunion. You know, I, it's fine that you go out and have a good time, but don't come to me telling me your back is bad. That class reunion was posted all over my class's Facebook pages. And of course, Wes graduated from the same high school 10 years later. He had access to all of that that was going on. A lot of it was public. Uh, I'd never been to any of my reunions before. And this was my 40th. Uh, a classmate put together an awesome event and we couldn't afford to do everything. So we chose the dinner the last night and it was wonderful. But she seemed so angry that I had a good time, you know, throwing up my back injury. Uh, I wasn't fucking break dancing out on the floor. Mike and I danced one slow dance, and we sat down, we were talking to people. And it doesn't matter. Anything you do for yourself that's enjoyable can be used against you, Peggy. It shouldn't surprise you at this point. The point is guilt. Guilt by control, and ultimately, what is the point of her guilt and her control is to keep you quiet, is to keep you from exposing her and the family bullshit. Remember, all this shit happened before she was nice to you, and she was only nice to you when she was out of her own mind. 
people came up to me that I didn't even think knew me. Um, the guy who put the event together wanted to make a video of our deceased classmates, kind of a slideshow, and he wanted an original song, so he contacted me, and like I said, I didn't even think he knew who I was. So I wrote a song and sent it to him. He said, that's perfect. Can we make it 10 minutes? Because Facebook will allow 10 minutes for this. I said, nope, not without it being really boring, so let me write a second song in the same key and see if I can intertwine them. So I did, and my son did the recording, and people, from their you know, compliments to me, they were just bowled over by it. And now I listen back to it. And my son was only 18, and bless his heart, we were, he was recording using his computer in a big building that had good acoustics. But I hear, you know, other like noises from the computer humming, and some of it just, it's not a top quality um, audio at all. But the song was good. We were even recognized in the little local paper for this song and video. And it was a mother who had lost her son when he was young from cancer. And, you know, that was just, it, that meant so much to me. It was the only attention I ever got for my music. And, like I said, people that I didn't think knew me were coming up to me. I was nobody in high school. I wasn't a wallflower. I wasn't even in the fucking parking lot. I was at home paralyzed by agoraphobia and terrified of the future because I didn't know what I was going to do when my parents died. I didn't think I could take care of myself. You know, the, the anxiety and depression seemed to always kind of be there at a low hum, but when I hit about 16 and especially 17, I had a complete emotional collapse. I was five foot six and went down to 98 pounds and I couldn't eat. And the same thing happened when Mike died. I've lost about 50 pounds so far. You know, I, I just can't eat. If I go out with friends for lunch or something, it, I do pretty well. But thoughts of food, sometimes that will even make me gag. You know, I, I, just, I couldn't swallow. My throat closes up. And there was no help given to me back then. My mother said I had a lot of problems and said she had no regrets about how she had raised me. So, you know, it was my fault, and she didn't want me to go to counseling. She said they always blame the mother, and I didn't fully understand how bad the emotional abuse was. She didn't want you to go to counseling because they always blame the mother. Look where her mindset has always been, Peggy. To conceal and hide her actions from the world again when was she nice to you when she lost her mind understand what her motivation is it's beyond the action of hurting you hurting you is part of the supply it's part of the benefit but your mother is motivated by something else is motivated by silence motivated by not being exposed was so i kept reassuring her that none of it was her fault but she liked me being unable to leave home it kept me under her control and i remember so much guilt and shame for turning out so so badly um i had to make notes because the last one i did was so disjointed i was embarrassed when i listened back to it but getting back to that song, Wes was jealous of it and the attention I got for it. You know, he co-owns a music school. I mean, he's highly trained, as I said, but I think he was jealous because I was getting attention for something that he didn't. He wasn't asked to do any kind of music. I mean, I'd have done something with him if we were on good terms, but that's, that wouldn't happen. So. He wanted to do it all. I'm not proficient on these instruments. I'm self-taught on most of them. So I can do what I can do and that's it. But people seem to kind of like it. And I'm sure he had plenty of ugly comments to make about the, uh, the quality of the audio on that uh, video. It's still floating out there somewhere. It's on a, a website. But um, let's see, let me do the next. Next one. You record that and you show it to some of your friends that uh, think you're 
are so pretty. Okay, um, that one, that, that, that is so sad. Record this and show it to some of your friends who think you're so pretty. You know, yeah, I'll let some friends. She wants, uh, and I'm glad you say that because sometimes it's hard to hear. Um, look, this is Peggy. Realize what this is. This is all a gaslight. She wants you to do the opposite. She's trying to gaslight you and scare you into silence. Understand her motivation. As soon as she lost her mind, then she loves you, huh? And hear it, but I'm even happier for the Ollie Matthews listeners to hear this so it can finally be obvious about how this woman treated me all my life. I mean, I'm telling the truth, and I have fucking proof here. And at the time, you know, of her, the tone of her voice lets me know she thinks I'm not pretty and she was trying to take the wind out of my sails. This was a high school reunion. We were all approaching 60. We dressed up, we complimented each other, there were pictures online, and yeah, we girls, or, or women, we told each other we were pretty. And my brother saw that in writing and went and took it to her and said, hey, you better, you better get on her again. Now she thinks she's really something. Now they're telling her she's pretty. So she had to jump in and make sure that I knew that I wasn't. But I look back at some of my old pictures. I thought I was so homely because I was never complimented on looks by family at all and you know I, I look at the pictures now and think damn I was almost kind of hot you know at, at one point you're a babe but, um, you're very pretty I just don't know how she could talk to me like this you know knowing Mike was terminal and I had so much stress on me it's like that's what she chose to do uh, but that does lead me to the topic of friends she didn't want me to have any friends and um, I had very few, and occasionally I'd be allowed to invite somebody over, but she made it so hard on me after they left, and sometimes in front of them I was embarrassed. I eventually retreated into a shell and didn't invite anybody over anymore. So it was a pretty lonely existence. I mean, you know, living out in the country with nobody my age even remotely close by, uh, shame so great over my agoraphobia that I never confided in anybody. Is it any wonder I turned to music? There was nothing else. You know, I desperately needed some kind of, of outlet, some kind of release. Um, I have two memories that are real brief and then I'm going to be done. But um, I had a little girl over, we were 14. And we were lying on our tummies, with, propped on our elbows, watching television on the floor. Well, she came through the room and she stepped on my backside and then on my friend. And my friend thought it was funny and giggled, you know, and my mother came back through the room to go back to the kitchen. She stepped on us again. Well, I knew that at 14, I mean, it made me angry. My friend thought it was funny, but I thought, she's walking on me. And I look back on it now and I realize, yeah, she was fucking walking on me. And the, only, the other memory I'll share is one that she shamed me and, and I was so embarrassed. It was back the same time period, a different friend. You know, back then, um, I, 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 it was monthly times were hard for girls. And accidents would happen, underwear didn't look so great, and you use Clorox. Well, I remember, you know, my mother standing there with a pair of my underwear in front of my friend. She turned them where the crotch could be seen, and it, of course it was pretty bad and she said well woo woo Peggy it certainly seems like you could do a little better than this and when I play this back it's going to give me the creeps because that sounded just like her but that's what she said and I would never have done that to my daughter if I saw panties laying somewhere that you know that she had company I'd grab them and get them out of sight so she wouldn't be embarrassed so you know, I think that's probably about it, uh, except I think about her too much. Uh, freely admit that. I hate her. I hate her. She ruined my life. Now my husband is dead. I'm left with almost no support. His family took a pout or two. I mean, they're, they're gone. 
So she finally got her wish, and here I am alone with, with Wes spreading the word about how I don't deserve the Social Security widow's pension. I mean, he, he would be happy to see me homeless on the street, and I can't wrap my mind around that kind of thinking. You know, especially I'm his older sister who adored him until he turned on me in order to get me out of the will. So my question is, how do I get this shit out of my head? Because I'm living through all the same feelings I had as a teen, and I don't need this on top of the grief I'm already dealing with. Or, or is it all tied together somehow? So I'll look forward to hearing what you have to say. And I really do appreciate you, and uh, I'll see you on YouTube. Bye-bye. Well, Peggy, <clears throat> the first thing you got to do is you, you you have to realize this is all so you you don't speak, so you don't expose them. There's motivation behind all of it. Motivation behind all of it, and look. I think you're too close to the situation, to be honest with you. The area you're in, you're still around Mike's family, you're still around your family. I I, I really think that you, you need a fresh start somewhere. You need a fresh start, new friends, new life, new... Because these people are eating you up. And she will continue to eat you up. And here's why you really have to cut her out. Okay, because now that she's out of her fucking mind, okay, and she's being nice to you, the only reason she's being nice to you is because she's out of her mind. You still have these emotions where now you have these tapes that you're hearing and you're still trying to sort out your life at 60. Okay, and now she's just this doddering mush brain Okay, so I love you like a puppy. Well, you know what? That doesn't that doesn't excuse her. Okay, for sixty years of abuse or your brother, it's his fucking problem. He wanted the will money, then he can take care of her. I don't understand what you're hanging in for at this point anymore, Peggy. Unless you're looking for them to to change, which they're never gonna do. They're never gonna do it. All they want is for you to be quiet, for you to shut up about it. That's all your mother's ever wanted. That's why she didn't take you as a child when you weren't eating and you couldn't swallow. Obviously psychosomatic, obviously anxiety driven, and obviously your mother knew she was the cause of all of it. They always blame the mother. Hmm. Well, your mother's been walking on you your entire life. And it took her losing her mind before she was ever fucking nice to you. The only way you start... And look, you're, so you're still going to have plenty of times of anger and rage because you're still deciphering all this bullshit. You're still going through it all and you clearly don't understand it all. How could you? You're still coming to me, which I appreciate and don't take that in the wrong way. But you haven't even gotten to the point where you realize all your mother wanted was you to shut the fuck up about it and just take the abuse. That it took her to become mentally ill before she was ever nice to you. And you keep that in perspective and it will be a lot easier. A lot easier to keep her and Wesley out of your life. So, thank you so much, Peggy, for all your support. I really appreciate it and I, I hope this helps. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you got a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help but can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general because it's Christmas and why not, 
because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been the Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.